All right, section nine, guys. I know my numbers have gotten just a little bit off. It seems kind of awkward to stop before the uh, section is over or you get to a new title page. Anyway, I'm going to start on page 202. Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent except for Thelma, the macaw, who is practicing a new phrase. Uh-oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings. Page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture and then another and another and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused. But what is it, she asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No, it does matter. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack and hurry. He says it's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. I try to hold up, hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me. Hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out of the hole, and more, and more, all of them, one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he, George says, as he puts on his coat. A lot, Julia says with a laugh, a whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you, George asks. I mean, no offense, Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will try to Mac will want to try to try selling them. Although why anyone would pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do, I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby, sleeping soundly, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the Big Top Mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. <clears throat> Chest beating. Often when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against their puny chests, pretending to be me. They pound away, soundless as the wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear, not even if you're wearing earplugs, not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running, as if the sky has broken open, as if men with guns are near. Angry. Thump. The sound, my sound, echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pile of pictures goes flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat and beat my chest. 
Bob hides under not tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry at last. I have someone to protect. Puzzle pieces. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm panting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that? George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down, thank goodness, George says. Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. Wish I hadn't bothered sweeping tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay, Julia asks. Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy stuck in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at her feet where my pictures lie in disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick these up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, she says again, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see blobs, many, many blobs, along with the occasional swirl. Please, can we go home now? That's an H, Dad. Julia leans down, straightening one picture, then another. There's an H. And here, she grabs more pictures. Put this one here. And, I don't know, maybe that one. You have an E. George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. <clears throat> Julia's running now. She picks up one picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word, maybe words, and a picture of something. A giant picture. Jules, George says, this is crazy. But he's looking at the floor, too, wandering from picture to picture and scratching his head. H, Julia says. E. O. Ho. Julia chews her lower lip. H, E, O, and that looks a lot like an I. H, E, O, I, George writes in the air with his finger. I, E, O, H, not the letter, an actual I, and that's a foot, or maybe a tree, <clears throat> and a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to my window. Ivan, she whispers. What did you make? I stare back. I cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart. Finally. Julia and George take the pictures to the ring where there's room to see them all. An hour passes as I try to assemble my puzzle. Ruby's awake now, and she and Bob and I watch. Ivan, Ruby says, is that a picture of me? Yes, I say proudly. Where am I supposed to be? That's a zoo, Ruby. See the walls and the grass and the people looking at you? Ruby squints. Who are all those other elephants? You haven't met them, I say, yet. It's a very nice zoo, Ruby says, without an, with an approving nod. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. It is indeed. In the ring, Julia pumps her fist in the air. Yes, she cries. I told you, Dad. There it is. H-O-M-E. Home. George gazes at the letters. He spins around to look at me. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Jules. You know, a once in a trillion kind of thing, like that old saying about the chimp and the typewriter. Give him long enough and he'll write a novel. <clears throat> I make a grumbling noise as if a chimp could write a letter, let alone a book. Then how do you explain the rest of it, Julia demands, the picture of Ruby in the zoo. How do you know it's a zoo, George asks. See the circle on the, gra on the gate? There's a red giraffe on it. George squints and tilts his head. Are you sure that's a giraffe? I was thinking more along the lines of a deformed cat. 
<clears throat> it's the logo for the zoo, Dad. It's on all their signs. Explain that. George gives her a helpless smile. I can't. I can't begin to. I'm just saying there has to be a logical explanation. Look how big this is. Julia puts the last piece of Ruby's right ear into place. It's huge. It is definitely large, George agrees. Julia watches me. She chews on her thumbnail. I see the question in her eyes. She turns back to the paintings and stares at them, tru looking, truly looking. A slow smile dawns on Julia's face. Dad, she says, I have an idea. A big idea. Julia races around the edge of my painting, her arms spread wide. Billboard big. I'm not following you. I think this is meant to be on a billboard. That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arms over his chest. What Ivan wants, he repeats slowly. And you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I'm an artist and he's an artist. Uh-huh, says George. Julia clasps her hands together. Come on, Dad, I'm begging you. George shakes his head. No, I'm not doing that. No billboard, no way. <clears throat> I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark out, but the billboard's lit. Mac will fire me, Jules. Julia considers. But think of the publicity, Dad. Everybody would know about Ruby. You want me to put a sign, put up a sign that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home on it in giant letters? George gestures toward my pictures. A sign, incidentally, that just happens to have been made by a gorilla? Exactly. And you want me to do it without Mac's permission? George asks. Exactly. No, George says. No way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, careful not to step on any of my paintings. She picks up Mac's claw stick. She walks back and hands it to her father. George runs a finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want to help her? But how would it help, Jules? Even if lots of people see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anything's going to change. I'm not exactly sure yet, Julia shakes her head. Maybe people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. Maybe they'll want to help, too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. She waves her trunk. It's a matter of principle, Dad. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. L-E, George corrects. Dad, Julia says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? George looks at me, at Ruby, at Julia. He drops the claw stick. The latter, he says quietly, is in the storage locker. The next morning. I watch Mac's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. Mad human. A mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too, especially when he's throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking the cotton candy machine. Phone call. Mac is kicking a trash can across the food court when the phone rings. He answers it red-faced and sweating. What the? He demands. He glares at me. I don't know what you're... He starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia who, he asks. Oh, sure, George's kid. She's the one who called you? More talking. With the phone to his ear, Mac comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He paints, sure. We've been selling his art for quite a while now. There's another long pause. Yeah, absolutely, it was my idea. Mac nods. A smile starts at the corner of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to come? See, you want to see him in action? Come on down. Have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us. We're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pictures. It's a, you know, what do you call it? A work in progress. 
When the call is done, Max shakes his head. Impossible, he says. An hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He is from the local paper, the one Julia called. How do you take one of me with the elephant? Or how about you take one of me with the elephant? Max suggests. He drops his arm around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera flicks. Perfect, the man says. Perfect, Mac agrees.